big hello and a very warm welcome to Brand Equity with me, Sonali Krishna. Well, today's episode requires a bit of a flashback. Remember the iconic Luna back in the 70s? Well, the kinetic Luna was a 50cc moped that was first introduced in India in 1972. While, while Luna was launched in 1972, a young copywriter made it famous many years later. But little did the Indian market know that both the product and that young talent would stand the test of time. As of 2024, one is an advertising mogul and the other is slated to make its big comeback in 2024. Joining me today is the daughter of the creator of the iconic Luna, the founder and CEO of Kinetic Green, Solaja Firodia Motwani, and that young copywriter who gave us Chal Mary Luna. It's none other than the one and only Piyush Pandey. Couldn't have been a better time to be having this discussion because, you know, it's Republic Day and uh, no better time for people to sit at home and actually kind of remember the iconic Luna because it was such a household name. Uh, Going to start with you, uh, uh, Sulaja. This is your second offering in the whole, uh, you know, uh, electric, uh, you know, vehicle space. You you had your first offering called Zulu. Uh, you know, uh, what is the trigger to bring back a, a, a you know a very uh, product which is filled with nostalgia and and was so relevant in the time it was launched to uh, you know uh, to an era which is now and and. Probably the Indian consumer has changed. Why is it that you felt that it was important to bring back the iconic Luna in its new avatar? Sure. Well, hi, Sonali and hi, Piyush. Very happy to be chatting with both of you. Hi, and so and, uh, what a day, Republic Day, as you mentioned, is the day that we're chatting today and also the day when we're actually throwing open the bookings of Iluna. So the Made in India Iluna is being presented to the India, uh, the country India today on a special day. So uh, very excited about that. Um, I think you asked a wonderful question as to why Iluna now and what's the vision and what's the relevance, you know, of the, the concept. Um, Kinetic has always been a trendsetter, um, you know, whether it's uh, Iluna, whether Luna, sorry, whether Luna, Kinetic Honda. Um, it's a company which has brought something unique and something which brings comfort and convenience to the country. And more importantly, a company which has looked at new technology, advanced technology, but brought it within the reach of the masses. And I think with eLuna, we are doing something similar. Um, as you know, e-mobility has caught the fancy of the country, not only in big towns, but also in small towns. Uh, everybody's talking about EVs. The demand for electric two-wheelers is increasing rapidly. And I think people all over the country are now interested to use this technology and save money um, and also contribute to the green India that we're all dreaming of. Um, I think in this context, the e-Luna is most relevant because I think once again, this product can do what Luna did in the 70s and 80s and 90s, which is to bring this technology and this personal mobility to the masses. Now with the electric tarka. And... Uh, I think that's why it's relevant because if you think about it, uh, today if anybody wants to buy a new vehicle, uh, they would have to spend about 3,000 rupees on an EMI and about 3,000 rupees equally on petrol, assuming one liter a day. So the total cost of owning a personal vehicle today, a petrol vehicle is six to 7,000 rupees. Now, if you look at where India is, half of India is earning between 15,000 to something like 35,000 rupees a month. And this large group of 750 million people, the spiders of India, are typically not able to afford their own vehicle because after paying for Roti Kapra Makan, they have about three, 4,000 rupees maximum for transport. And as we saw, the cost of owning a petrol vehicle is six to 7,000 rupees. So this large group of Indian population is using pers not personal transport, but public transport. They're going by bus, they're going on cycle, they're going by foot, or they're using the shared autos. Cut to eLuna, which is now coming in with this electric uh, magic technology, where the EMI will cost about 2,500 rupees and there is zero petrol cost. The total cost of running an eLuna will be about 200 rupees a month on charging. So the total cost of owning this vehicle for a mass is going to be 2,500 to 2,700 rupees. And therefore, it will be within the reach of this large population, which has a budget of 3,000 rupees a month for personal transport. And therefore, we believe that eLuna in its new e avatar will once again do what Luna did, which is bring personal mobility to the masses of the country. And I think, therefore, it's very relevant. 
Right. So, Sulita, if I've got you right, you're very clear that the e-Luna will cater to tier one, tier two, and small towns as a means of mobility uh, and, and a very, uh, you know, efficient and uh, uh, money-saving uh, kind of, of, of vehicle. Am I correct? So, you're not really looking at the big metros and, uh, you know, the, the top towns. In fact, that's what makes it more most interesting. Today, yeah. most of the electric vehicles are catering to the classes, uh, the high-performance vehicles with the software and the technology platform. But nobody's thinking about Bharat. Correct. But I think if you look at India, a large part of population is living not only in metros, but in the tier two, tier three towns and villages. 85% of India is living in these locations. And Iluna is designed not for India, but for Bharat. So it has big wheels, it has high ground clearance, it has a very sturdy a body. So very well suited for the entire country. So the only EV made for Bharat and not just for India. So yes, to answer your question, we are very confident that Iluna will cater to people all across the country, not just India, but for Bharat. Okay, just before I go to Piyush, uh, you know, one, uh, since the launch is today, the 26th of Jan, I want to know the the cost of, of the e-Luna. There was, like, there's a, there's a 70,000 figure, there's a 75,000 figure. So I thought I'll just get it from the horse's mouth. So what we're doing, Sonali, is that the Luna is going to come to the market in stages and okay. we're opening the bookings of the vehicle where customers can, can come to our website and pre-book the vehicle by paying just 500 rupees. Okay. And the price will be revealed on the 7th of February in Delhi. We are very proud to say that Mr. Nitin Gadkari ji, who's our transport minister, will be coming to unveil and launch the Luna. And it's on that day that we will announce the price. So we are going to keep the mystery going. <laughs> We want okay. people to come and check it out, yes. Sure. Uh, Piyush, let me come to you. The first time uh, when Luna came to the Indian market, it was marketed by some other firms. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then you came up with Chal Mary Luna, which just, you know, basically took that entire campaign and the product to just another level and became India's everyday work workhorse. It also started a trend of a lot of ad campaigns that, you know, uh, followed uh, the trend of amalgamating the authentic Indian emotion to the communication of the product offering and the price point. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about that, uh, you know, and how you're going to marry what you created then to uh, ensure that there is that product alignment, that nostalgia which comes through, but also keeping it fresh because it is the new Iluna. So there are two answers to your questions. <clears throat> So first, uh, let's go back in history. Sure. Uh, Luna was handled by Ogilvy even before I came in. Uh, and there was a need uh, that we go to the masses. We could not do any more of English. We could not do any more of uh, product features kind of a thing. We had to become a part of the country. And that's when my seniors uh, Mani Ayer and Suresh Malik brought me into uh, moving on to Luna and I had a fantastic uh, relationship with Sulaja's father, Mr. Arun Khirodia sure. and uh, very different from any other people. He's a man who decided on his own. He said very little but he understood very hugely and he knew how to brief, he knew how to listen, he knew how to play off the front foot. So when I presented three commercials. There were three commercials of Chalmeri Luna. He loved Chalmeri Luna anyway. When I presented three commercials, uh, I thought he'll say, okay, this one. And he pulled out his toothpick from his mouth and said, Tino Banado, make all three. Radha Jab Medical Me Aai, Jo Sab Chaha Na Kar Pai. समझदारी उसने दिखलाई झटपट एक लूना अपनाई चल मेरी लूना लूना करती पक्का वादा खर्चा कम मजबूती ज्यादा हर ओर अब लूना भागे राधा को रखे वो आगे उससे पूछो क्या है राज हंसकर वो कहती है आज सफल अगर बनना है दूना शान से बोलो चल मेरी लूना and that's where uh, Telmiri Luna started and uh, that's where I wanted to make it into an authentic Indian 
communication which fitted the kind of people that I thought would be interested in moving into Luna far beyond where they were anyway. When Sulaja contacted me and a father was also there and I shared with them, I said, listen, times have changed and I do work with Bajaj also. So I'll have to speak to Raji and they said, no, no problem. We'll, we love you and we love your work. Try and get a permission. I went to Raji Bajaj and I said, Raji, you don't handle these things and I will not put that pressure on you. WPP has a second company called 8215. Are you open to the game? I spoke to Mr. Ferodia and Sulaja and said, this is what Rajiv says, are you open to the game? Both of them say, said yes. Uh, that's the kind of trust and faith that they actually placed in me. Um, I don't think I know of such stories um, on any, anybody else. And, and I lived to that. And uh, where the where did I feature into that in the first part of it, which is to explain to the 82.5 people that what is Luna? Why is it loved by people? It's many years later, but why is it loved by people? And it's a paper, people's vehicle, which people should love. And rest of it is about the e-Luna, all that you take care of with Sulajja. I will give you the brief today that never, ever lose the soul of Luna. So, Laja, when can we see this campaign? Sure. Well, let me first add to what you said. Um, when we conceptualized eLuna, let me tell you that it was my father who gave me the vision of eLuna. He said that there are many people making electric vehicles, electric scooters, motorcycles, but you do something different. Mm. Something, you know, which is unique to kinetic green. Um, something, you know, which is which can make a huge difference to the country, you know, not just as another product, but as a movement, you know, as a trendsetter, as a category creator. And uh, you should do eLuna. And uh, first I was sure because I felt that, you know, customers are still adopting EVs. They're still it's innovators and early adopters who are buying electric vehicles. And, you know, whether the uh, core customer in our country, the middle class, lower middle class, the small town customer is ready to embrace electric or not. Sure. Uh, but then the more I thought about it, I was convinced that Iluna has, you know, the time for Iluna has come uh, to give again wings of mobility uh, to the country, to the aspiring India. And just like Luna became a partner in progress for Indians in the 70s, 80s, as their first vehicle, it can once again become partner in progress for the new aspirants of India in the electric avatar. And when we began working on Iluna, I think for six to nine months, I pursued Piyush. <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, Piyush, I can't think of anybody other than you to bring this Iluna back uh, to the country. The connect that you have with the brand and the way you can tell a story, nobody else can. And whatever constraints he had, uh, he was very gracious to speak to Rajiv and Rajiv was gracious to accept his request. And uh, we are very happy to have him on board. And I can tell you that the campaign is something that we are very excited what they have presented to us. It has Piyush written all over it. Uh, I think he has, of course, corrected his uh, team members whenever they deviated from what was the soul of Luna. And therefore, the campaign is also going to be something which brings a smile to your face, just like the Chalmiri Luna did. Um, and we can't wait to present this campaign to the country. And I think it will once again uh, create that magic. I'm very excited about it. And I'll just tell you one thing, though I won't tell you much about the campaign. I'll just tell you two things about it. Uh, in addition to that, it has written, Piyush written all over it. Um, there are two more similarities. One is that, again, the new campaign will come with beautiful stories, which will bring a smile to your face, like the Chal Meluna campaign did. And the other similarity is that there are, once again, three films which are coming, not just one. So this is all I can tell you, but it's going to be a wonderful campaign. And I think um, in just about eight to nine weeks from now, it should be there. Um, and we are excited about not just with the product, but the story that uh, it's going to, you know, uh, come with with the campaign and we're excited about it. Uh, Suraj, a little bit about, you know, uh, the con consumption story of India. Uh, every time you speak to, uh, you know, heads of companies across categories, everybody's talking about how the consumption story of India is evolving. Uh, they're talking about a lot of premiumization, even in tier two and tier three markets. Uh, However, when you always ask them about the rural narrative, for the longest time, uh, they talk about the fact that, yes, we're seeing green shoots, but that kind of momentum 
from the rural story is yet to be seen. They're hoping that that change happens. Uh, at a time like this, when we're seeing, you know, very slight uh, and slow movement from, from rural India, uh, how do you see the market uh, from your perspective and the challenges, uh, you know, to make the re-entry into the market and remaking the space for yourself in this, in this EV space? Uh, in a category that is, uh, you, you know, uh, basically ha has a lot of uh, buzz, but also a lot of challenges when it comes to the EV infrastructure. So a little multi-pronged question about, you know, adoption in the rural market uh, and tier one, tier two, and also the fact that what is the kind of uh, anxiety relief you are going to be communicating to the consumer in terms of, you know, their own uh, uh, concerns about charging, about range anxiety, and stuff like that? Well, I think there are two, three parts to it. Uh, one is that I feel that in the India's growth story now from here to be one of the largest economies in the world, it's going to be all about inclusion, right? I mean, if we don't include the 85% of India, which is living beyond metro and mini metros, India as a country cannot be the world's, you know, top three or top five superpowers. And I think in the Amrit Kal that is being envisaged, inclusive growth is going to be critical. So I think that um, time for, you know, uh, an all around growth of India, inclusive growth of India is, is definitely here. And, um, and therefore, I think I'm very bullish about the progress of not just the metros, but, you know, the, let's say the hinterland of India. Now, when it comes to EVs or Iluna, let's say, um, I think we are catching on that fabric of progress. In fact, my team asked me that day that what does Luna, E Luna stand for? You know, give me one word. And the only word that came to my mind was progress. So the E Luna is designed to be not just a personal vehicle, it is designed to be a livelihood creator as well. So it's a vehicle which is designed with so many features. It has a very strong uh, chassis. You can carry 150 kgs of payload on it. You can keep uh, use it to keep things in the front, on the back, on the sides. Uh, and therefore, it can become like a chalti, chalta fitta dukan. And in fact, we are going to come up with a concept called Meri Wali Luna. That means a Luna can be whatever you want it to be. You know, it can become a Pani Puri stall. It can become a Momo stall. It can become a delivery gig workers, a livelihood vehicle in the day and, you know, a vehicle for personal use in the evening. Um, it can use be used to deliver, uh, you know, uh, material from the store to the customers or a wholesale to retail. Uh, it can be used as a cute little commuter at with really no running costs. So it's a very utility, utilitarian, versatile product. And now coming to the question you asked about adoption, um, I strongly believe that the electric uh, revolution is going to be much bigger in smaller towns than in metros. Because saving that three to 4,000 rupees has much more meaning in a smaller town in a rural area than in a city where earnings are could higher. And today with the government's work, uh, we may not have gas stations everywhere, but we have electricity in every village. Mm. So, you know, uh, it's easy to uh, charge this vehicle because almost every home is now electrified. And coming to the question on charging, the e-Luna is designed in such a way that you don't need a fancy charging infrastructure for it. It can okay. be charging just like a normal plug point, like we charge our mobile phones. So we give you a portable charger with it, which you plug into your vehicle and you plug into the electric socket. And within three hours, your vehicle is fully charged. You know, Sulaja Kinetic has planned out uh, a product launch offensive over the next five years. And given your strong growth trajectory in the segments, uh, basically electric two and three wheelers, uh, these are the fastest growing segments in the electric vehicle space. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe from 6% penetration is expected to go up to about 30 to 40% uh, penetration with like about a 70-75% CAGR rate of growth. How do you see eLuna in the in this mix adding value to your portfolio? So, um, you know, you see every, of course, we are very proud of the product range we are creating, we have created, uh, we are well positioned, you know, to ride this uh, hockistic growth. Uh, we have created a network of 500 dealers across the country. We've done almost 1,200 crores of revenues. We are well established. I feel that when they write the history of Kinetic and other Firodia family, the green page belongs to me. And it's my way of taking ahead the legacy of the family, which has done a lot for the society. And I look forward to doing that, you know, with this electric, which not only will help people 
to commute better, but reduce the pollution and reduce the cost of transport. So it's a very exciting time, you know, to be um, taking Anity Green ahead. And I think in this growth, Luna has the most special place. Uh, if you see all automobile companies, you know, while they have a large product range, there's always one or two products which are the hero products. I think for us, eLuna will be such a growth driver. Uh, while we will have other models, I think eLuna is something that will become a, um, you know, a multi-bagger for us, um, a large volume creator for us, and allow us to spread our network across the country. And then other products will also get the benefit from it. So I think I see it as one of the growth drivers, as a unique product. Uh, Kinetic has in its DNA to be bringing new technology, but at affordable prices. And that requires a lot of work on the ground, a lot of frugal engineering while meeting regulation, while ensuring safety, while ensuring durability. You need to still be able to create a product which works in terms of technology durability, but at affordable price. And that's our DNA. So I think that uh, that uniqueness of Kinetic we will bring to the table and ensure that Luna remains, you know, a, a unique product. And uh, we are all very excited about, you know, its arrival in 2024. Uh, Sunita, you know, just want to talk to you a little bit about the roadblocks for the industry at large, because we've seen this uh, heavy semiconductor shortage, right? And the industry is still readjusting to that. Uh, I mean, I believe some of it is is under bay now, but it's not fully, we're not fully out of the woods when it comes to the semiconductor shortage. Also, the battery technology is still evolving. And of course, the Indian consumer and their ever-changing demand. So, uh, you know, what do you see as some of the uh, the teething problems as India slowly but steadily starts adopting, uh, you know, EV vehicles? So certainly there are more, um, you know, I would say headwinds. Uh, there are more things which are to be yet resolved than what are resolved. Sure. Um, it is technology, there is battery technology, there is innovation, you know, uh, pricing cost, because today it's not still at scale. And since we don't have critical mass, the cost of the technology still will come down as we reach a volume but what comes first you know lower cost or uh, high volume um, there is a push for make in india but the suppliers here need to see demand in order to make the investment so what comes first demand or investments um, so there are many things which we are working on as a sector i also chair fiki zv committee i chair ifg zv committee and we're doing a lot of work with the government uh, to come up with a favorable policy framework because that's required a consistent framework where people feel confident to make investments with a long-term vision and i think so far the government of india has done a wonderful job in giving that kind of confidence and push to the sector whether it is through five percent gst vis-a-vis 28 percent whether it's through the fame scheme which has been you know instrumental in reducing the price gap whether it's the push to the battery uh you know cell manufacturing through the pli so I think we have well begun. Of course, we are nowhere close to being half done. Uh, we still are at a five to six percent. So we are requesting the government to continue the support, especially the demand incentives via FAME. We are requesting for a FAME 3 so that the customer still gets EVs at affordable prices. And once we reach that critical mass, which we will in the next five years at around 25 percent, then it will you know, kind of carry on its own momentum where you have enough technology, enough suppliers, enough uh, scale, so that charging will come up, cost will come down, and then we won't need any more demand incentive. Uh, I want to interrupt you. Sure. The difference between me and my team is that I was on petrol and diesel. <laughs> they are driving on EVs. <laughs> <laughs> so like one of our guys said, Chal meri luna, but ab petrol ke bina. So, <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> well, on that note, more power to you, uh, Sunaja and Kinetic, and of course, uh, more power to Piyush Pandey and his team, who's going to bring this entire product to life and tell us those magnificent stories. I have to end this by saying that uh, I went to college in Pune, and you know, it, you know, two wheelers are a must in Pune. It's bursting as of now, as we speak. But Kinetic Honda was my first uh, ever, uh, you know. Uh, two-wheeler, so I have a lot of nostalgia myself attached to the Kinetic Green Company, so much more power to you, and hopefully we'll see a great revolution with the launch of eLuna. Looking forward to seeing the commercial and, of course, uh, the design and uh, the pricing. Thank you so much.